Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday video. So I quilted my checkerboard tiles block this week on the long arm, and when I took it off, I had a bit of a bad surprise, and that was the form of tension issues in my boxy loops design. So the design I was stitching, I know this is super, super bright fabric, but basically, uh, if you can see this, the design I was stitching went into these slightly curvy boxes and I was getting a subtle tension pull in each corner. Now that does look like a tension issue to me because this is a long arm with a stitch regulator. If I was on a whole machine and that happened, I would maybe wonder if that was maybe a speed movement issue. Maybe my hands were moving really fast through that corner and uh, then my speed wasn't keeping up with it. That can often happen when you're free motion quilting on a whole machine. But when you're free motion quilting on a long arm and you have a stitch regulator, technically the stitch regulator should be taking care of that. So that reads as a tension issue to me. So today I'm gonna to try and troubleshoot through this, figure out what's going wrong. Because I did check my tension before I got started, of course, that's kind of a good habit, but I don't think I checked it enough. Uh, I didn't give myself quite enough space in my background, in my backing fabric, or in my batting to really do good substantial tension tests before I get started on those blocks and I paid the price with that one. So in this video, I wanna walk through the steps to doing a tension test. I think this is a really good thing to do at the beginning of every quilt. Uh, leave yourself a good five to six inches of space on both sides of the quilt, uh, particularly if you know that you've been having some trouble, if that's been a little bit fiddly for you lately, leave yourself plenty of space because you're gonna use up that space testing the machine before you actually get on the real quilt. Now, if it's a really bad tension issue and you just can't seem to find a solution for it, take the quilt you're working on off the frame completely and put a half a yard of fabric on here. So uh, I took a half a yard of fabric and that became my backing. I've got a little scrap of batting here and then I've got a half of a yard of the same fabric on top. Uh, so that's really my first tip is to just completely reset, restart uh, and clear your frame completely because otherwise you're going to end up uh, you know, just continuing to stitch bad tension over lots of different quilts, you're gonna feel frustrated. And I really feel like a reset kind of resets your mind too, uh, meaning you're not expecting perfect stitches and you're not maybe leaning towards getting quite so frustrated. I know I tend to, if I've got a quilt on the frame, that's when I wanna be quilting, that's when I wanna be working on. When I've got something like a practice sandwich or just simply scrap fabric on the frame, I'm a lot more patient about everything. Uh, and this is my uh, final tip before we get started, and that is if you are feeling very frustrated and, and very angry, <laughs> that is not the time to be troubleshooting take a break, maybe even a few days. Uh, I cannot count the number of times that I have worked with uh, someone through a tension issue on their frame, on their long arm, and it's user error. It's a small thing. It's a threading problem. It's a, it needs a new needle, or it's, it, you know, it's some sort of user error kind of thing. Maybe the bobbin wasn't wound quite right or something along those lines. And it's even more frustrating when you realize <laughs> it was your fault. <laughs> But 99% of the time, that's the issue. The machines very rarely break. Uh, it's usually user error, something wrong in the threading. Uh, maybe that bobbin needed to be adjusted a little bit. Uh, maybe just simply you needed to tweak your tension a little bit before you got started. And this is the other thing. Uh, and the main question that I get about the Grace Cunique and about the Grace Long Arms, and that is, uh, you know, online reviews, you might read lots and lots of online reviews that just say, oh, these machines have terrible tension issues. Well, you've got to actually think about and study the source. That is the person's very, very first ever long arm. Then you're coming off of a home sewing machine. In a home sewing machine, you set the tension and you forget it, right? You don't have to worry about that. You don't think about your tension on a home sewing machine when you change a bobbin. You don't think about that when you change thread. You don't take, think about that when you take two or three days off uh, and aren't quilting and get back on a quilt. You don't check your tension on a home sewing machine obsessively. A long arm is very different. It's a very different machine. So number one, it's different. You're gonna have to get into the habit of checking tension often 
far, far more often than you ever would have checked it on a home sewing machine. So I hope that that helps. It's a mentality shift. You're not on a home sewing machine anymore. That tension dial, you know, the thread, the machine, the bobbin, all that kind of stuff can just simply go weird. Maybe elves come in and mess with it in the middle of the night or something. I don't know. But I do find when I turn off the machine and leave it for two or three days or a week, I need to come back in and check in and make sure everything's running just fine. You know, I never know when my kid might run down here and fiddle with something. You know, it could be that. Uh, it just could be just subtle things change. Humidity in the air. I don't really know, but I do know that getting into the habit of checking your tension more often is absolutely essential for being a happy long armor. So let's get started. I'm gonna turn on my other camera and we're gonna get started troubleshooting this tension issue. I'm gonna go step by step and talk through it. Um, and really the most important key, change one thing at a time, watch your frustration level. Don't do this when you're angry, when you're tired, when you're cranky not going to work. You're going to end up making more mistakes in your threading, which is going to cause even more tension problems, I promise. So let's get started working through this step by step, very slowly, and with a lot of patience for ourselves and our machine. So the very first thing whenever you're troubleshooting a tension issue is just to do some stitch outs, uh, whether this is on the side of your quilt or this is on a practice sandwich here. I've loaded up a half of the yard. It's good to just stitch out some straight lines, do the design that you noticed your tension issue happening with, so that way you can see what that looks like too. So checking in here and looking at my stitches, what I'm seeing is just, it's very subtle. It's a lack of delineation. And what I mean by that is that the thread looks like it's kind of setting on the surface, especially when I'm stitching in that direction, in that section. It's also happening down here. You might not be able to see that. So it's happening for that first little section. And, uh, and basically what that means is the top thread is not pulling all the way into the middle of the quilt. In fact, it's actually pulling up a little bit on the bobbin thread. And that's what's creating that straight line. Uh, it doesn't look like individual stitches. It looks like a straight line of thread. So this can be two different things. This could be the top tension is too tight, and that means that uh, it's the top thread is pulling the bobbin thread up to the surface and not letting it pull into the middle. So that could be the problem there. Uh, it could also be the direction that I'm stitching in, although that's a little bit less of an issue. Uh, because it's a long arm, it is really designed to go in all different directions. So it could just simply be, okay, it was just getting used to that direction and then the tension kind of fluctuated and it looks a little bit better further down. Uh, so sometimes you can do something about it, sometimes not necessarily. It could also be something wrong with the thread itself. It could be twisting, which is causing the thread to kind of feed slightly differently. This is something that is really good to understand. Thread is designed to feed into the machine off of a spool spindle, uh, especially the isocord thread that I like using on my long arm. It's designed to feed up, but which spindle you hit and how it goes through does affect the thread because if it comes up and is spinning as it enters the machine, then that is making the thread get thicker basically and it's adding twist to it. And I noticed whenever I was stitching the other way that I had just a little bit of almost like a curly cue here right next to the needle. So if you're starting to see something weird go on uh, near your needle or somewhere along the stitch path where the thread is kind of seeming to, to curl up, or the opposite, untwisting on you so that you're seeing the plies splitting apart, that might be a sign that you need to switch something about how the thread is feeding. And this is what I did when I was playing around with this, is I realized I needed the thread to come straight up and hit the first loop on my spool spindle, then hit the second loop, then hit this top guide. So I flipped it back just so I could create the tension issue for you, and then now I'm gonna flip it back the other way. And I think that that's going to sort out that very subtle issue. So here we go. And this is just, you know, so a lot of the stuff you guys are going to be like, wow, that's really subtle. That's a really small deal, but it's something that can make a difference. Okay. So I have a lot of extra thread here. So I'm going to hang on to that gently while I just stitch up and down a few times and let that feed through the machine. 
and I'll go into that boxy uh, loops, that boxy spiral knot or boxy loops design. And that's going to be a good test just to see if I'm getting those little pulls in the corners again. So this design, straight lines, but you can have those corners curve. And that's where I think I was getting, yeah, in each, in each corner, I was just getting a little pull of the top thread falling to the back. So my stitches overall are looking a bit better. However, in a few places like right there, it's just kind of looking like a straight line of thread rather than nice delineated stitches. So let's check in now and make sure that every single thing is threaded properly. And I want you to notice that everything that I do, I stop, I stitch, I look at the stitches and I say, okay, did that change it? Did it fix it? Well, kind of, but not really. Do a, some straight lines, do your design, really put it through its paces with every single thing that you change. If you go at a machine and you change seven things, then which thing fixed it? You haven't learned anything, you haven't understood why the problem happened and how you can correct it easily and quickly next time. So the whole point of this, it's kind of like putting on your detective hat. Uh, you want to learn so then next time it happens it's going to be so much easier to deal with and you want to learn so you know what the culprit is so you can avoid it in the future too. Okay, so I'm going to run my finger through each of the guides and how they go and I always thread this spool spindle kind of backwards. Uh, I go around the back and through the hole and then it hits this guide. And here's the thing, I started wiggling on this and realized, wow, that's a lot of movement right there. And this is the thing, a long arm rattles. It's a heavy duty, powerful machine. And that rattling can loosen up some stuff. So once I felt that, I was like, oh, okay, I think I might adjust that downward and I think I need to tighten it up. And that's the thing, a lot of these guides, you'll see that they have play in them. They can be adjusted. So if you feel like something, like a guide is kind of not quite doing its job, it's not keeping the thread where it needs to go, or maybe just a little bit of an angle like that would help the thread feed into that tension disc better, then make that adjustment and play. You're allowed to adjust things and play a little bit and see if that helps make it work a little bit better. See, I needed to tighten that up one more, just a little bit of a tighten. And now I can't move that just with my fingers gripping it, uh, and it's definitely not gonna rattle out of position. And I, that is a much more severe angle than what it had before, but I think that's going to help the thread feed down into that tension disc and stay in the disc. And this is another thing that I found. Let's actually, I'm gonna cover that Let's test again just to make sure that this is working better and see how that goes. We only ever change one thing at a time before we test. So here we go. A few more loops. Want to keep those lines straight so that way that's really where I was seeing the issue. You know, if you see an issue and then you go into stitching something totally different, well, then you're not testing the issue. So I really need to test exactly what I was stitching before. And that is looking a lot better. I'm seeing better delineation between my stitches. Now I'm gonna pop and kind of just bend down and look under the long arm at my stitches. And I put my hand on top of it because the light is shining so bright that I can't necessarily see. Now, of course, I've got my ruler plate on here, so I need to actually stitch right back and get it completely open here so that way I can actually see what's going on underneath. And so I'll share a picture here so you can see what that looks like on the back side. It's actually looking great. I'm not getting any of those little pulls. Those have magically disappeared. And this is another thing. You might be having an issue one day and then turn on the machine the next day and it just goes away. Like I said, little elves might come in and fix it for you. Who knows? Um, but I do think it's good to run through it and play, and then especially if you're having something that's frustrating, uh, really to know what's going wrong. I do think that you know this loosening up and adjusting, it was tilting kind of towards the front rather than towards the back. I think that that's gonna make a big difference. Now, one thing about your tension dial, I know it's very tempting, especially when you see loops pulling to the back, it's very tempting to go and just crank down on this and tighten up that tension. I'm only gonna tighten it up by one 
circle by one loop around. Sometimes I only tighten by like a half and you've got a little notch on the tension dial so you can see how many times you're turning that around. I'll be honest, it's really easy to crank down on this too much and get too much tension on the dial and then your thread it's kind of like getting squished between those tension dials. And I have noticed that when I cranked down on it too hard and got too much tension on the disc, that the thread kind of got squished out from between the discs. So it wasn't even, it didn't even have tension on it at all uh, because the discs were being pressed so tightly together that the thread was getting smooshed out of that space. So that's just my personal experience. Uh, that's something that I noticed uh, from observation and it's something I've been very, very careful about ever since to not just go kind of tension crazy and cranking down on that dial too hard. Okay, this is looking better. You can see in these vertical lines, I've got nice stitch definition now. It's looking a lot less, like I've got just a straight line of thread. Let's go back into our boxy loops design and make sure that's looking good too. Maybe some curves as I stitch out because I need to open myself up some space here and get down to an area I can quilt in. All right, now let's go back into some straight lines. There we go. And this is a great way to practice, to warm up your body for the day. You know, just check in, put a little bit of scrap fabric on your frame, maybe even just a fat quarter, and that's gonna warm up your body so that you're able to move the machine so much better, so much smoother, and that's gonna help out too. And notice I'm bringing these lines a lot closer together. Well, the reason is the tighter that you stitch those lines, the uh, more bang for your buck that you get, you get more stitching, uh, more density for the amount of space that you're using. So if you're worried about the waste factor, like, oh, I'm wasting that fabric, well, stitch a little bit denser, you get more of a tension test for that smaller space. Okay, so this is looking a little bit better, but you know, I think one other thing that I really should do, I think I should take the babbin out and completely dust out my machine because I can't quite remember the last time I did that. And this is another thing, uh, you know, especially I've noticed with isochord thread, it can be like a little bit of a residue kind of comes off that thread after I stitch an entire quilt that can kind of build up a little bit. It's not a lot. It's, a, it's almost like a kind of a white lotion-y, probably some sort of wax in the manufacturing process. And it's something I've only noticed because this is the thread that I use and it's my favorite thread and I use so much of it. Uh, and it's very subtle, but it can build up. So that might be something too, where the bobbin case and bobbin area has just gotten a little bit on the gummy side and I need to brush that out really good. But overall, I'm very pleased with this. I think this is looking good. Uh, I'm gonna try cranking down on my tension one more time. And I also wanna show you what happens when you miss a guide. So I'm gonna miss that guide, which I know that guide in particular is really important. And uh, my machine tends to like to hop out of that guide. So I wanna just show you what happens when you miss a guide completely and it's just not, it's not, uh, it's not been threaded. First off, uh, if you can see this, notice how wiggly wobbly this thread is. It is jumping like crazy, but also notice that my stitches on the top here look pretty good. So unless you actually bend down and look underneath your frame and check your stitches, you probably wouldn't know that you're missing a guide and it's gonna look terrible on the back. So I'm gonna stitch a little bit like this and then I'll share photos of what it looks like on the back. And here's what it looked like whenever I stitched through that with a guide missing. So yeah, it is really important to make sure that your machine is properly threaded. This is step number one. And this is the thing that is so easy to get wrong. You're in a hurry, you're excited about long arm quilting, you're excited and ready to get started. And it's just so easy to be flying through it and to miss something really important. So slow down, take your time, make sure every single guide is threaded. 
And what I usually will do, if I, especially if I'm in a hurry, I'll just visually look at each guide, run my, you know, kind of dot my finger across them. This one's an easy one, this little kind of pigtail thing right here at the front. This guide right above the needle is extremely easy to miss, and that can really throw your stitches off. Your stitch quality can just go completely out the window if you miss those guides. And, um, the other key is to check often, you know, just check in, make sure nothing's hopped out, which can happen. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a long arm. It's a very powerful machine and it's vibrating and it's jiggling and things can hop out of guides. It's not, you know, an uncommon thing for it to happen. So double check yourself. And then if you see your thread just wiggling around like crazy, it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> you know, it just, it's kind of good to really get synced up with your machine where you know exactly what it sounds like when it's running well, you know exactly what it looks like when it's running well, and then when something gets thrown off, you can hear it, you can see it, and you know you gotta stop and go check in with that and make sure everything's okay. All right, so I actually had changed two things right before I did that messy stitching, and that was I had cranked down on my tension and I'd popped out of a guide. So I wanna check in one more time and see how my tension is looking and make sure that I am well set up to get started quilting something fun today. So this is looking pretty good. Like I said, I think I need a brush out in the bobbin area. I think that's really going to sort out any last minute things, I'm gonna just dial that tension down just a bit, and I think that looks good. I'm honestly pretty satisfied about that. And this is the thing, you know, being hyper picky about your stitches can get a little bit on the obsessive compulsive side. So be careful about that. Uh, you know, a little bit of stitch delineation having a problem you know, that's not gonna be something I'm gonna rip out, honestly. Uh, you know, you've gotta, gotta pick your battles, and when I see a thread pulling to one side or the other, that to me is a severe tension issue. That's something that needs to be addressed. Subtle delineation issues where you don't see every single stitch just exactly right, that's more subtle. I don't think that that's quite such a big deal to get obsessive about. So I hope that that makes sense and you understand some steps to run through whenever you're having a tension issue. Now, as far as changing your needle, this might be something that you are wondering about. Changing your needle doesn't necessarily affect tension. Of course, a dull or bent needle can cause a whole host of issues. You could have thread breaks, you could have thread shredding, you could have uh, batting pulling through to the back of the quilt. If you have a burr on your needle, uh, that could definitely be happening. So if you're seeing bearding while you're on the long arm and it's pulling to the back, that could be your needle right there. Tension issues, I don't feel like that's quite so common, but if that's a concern for you, Yes, change your needle and run another test. But no matter what you do, every single time you run a test, stop and stitch, see what looks like, make a decision, see if you need to continue to adjust things or you're happy with your stitches, and then go play. Uh, but always change one thing at a time and then check your machine and check in. Because if you change 17 things on this, if you rethread the whole thing, and then you change your needle, and then you adjust something, and then you fiddle with your tension. Well then, what was the problem in the first place? You know, what was the culprit, ultimately? And then, in all of that changing, if you miss a guide, it's still not gonna work. <laughs> so, keep that in mind. I know tension issues are frustrating. I know that it can be just the absolute worst part of your day. But you gotta stay patient with it. Uh, make sure to, you know, just chill out, put something simple, a practice sandwich scrap fabric on your machine, something that you can see your stitches really well, not busy fabric, something that allows you to see your stitches on the front and the back so you can see what's happening, and then give yourself permission to test calmly, efficiently, one thing at a time. I promise you, you're gonna learn more about your machine, you're gonna get to know it better, and you're gonna understand more about tension and how all of this stuff comes together and works. So I wish you the best of luck in making sure that the tension on your machine is looking good before every single quilt. If you'd like to learn more about the Grace Cunique 
15R or 14 plus. It's the same machine, just different numbers. Uh, come and check it out at leahday.com slash grace. I am a dealer for Grace Company. I absolutely love this machine. I love my continuum frame. I highly recommend them and that's why I offer them for my quilting friends. And if you use the hello my quilting friends discount code, you can get an additional $100 off your long arm machine and frame purchase. So come and check that out at leahday.com slash grace. And until next time, let's go quilt.